This Wi-Fi 6 Netgear router gives you six gigabits per second throughput and can cover up to 6,000 square feet of your home. Now we've all been through a time where we're using a router from the ISP and we get to the other side of the house or not so far away from it and the Wi-Fi drops out or the Wi-Fi signal is just not great. Well, this is no more, as this Netgear mesh system makes all those problems disappear. Stay tuned in this video as we go through the specs of the router, how to get it set up. We'll also take a look at some of the software features too that come within the Orbi app. Also, let me say a quick thank you to Netgear for sending me this to review. Let's take a look at what comes inside the box. You get one Orbi router, two satellite boxes, one two meter ethernet cable, three 12 volt power leads, and a quick start guide. The specification router I said right at the start of this video. It has a six gigabit per second throughput, and that's across all the Wi-Fi ranges. So that runs 2400 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, 2400 megabits per second on the five gigahertz spectrum, and there's also another five gigahertz range which runs at 1200 megabits per second. Totaling all of that up, that is 6000 megabits per second. Both the router and the satellites have eight powerful Wi-Fi antennas. You can't see them on the main unit, but they do actually exist inside the casing. It has a powerful quad-core 2.2 gigahertz processor. On the back of the router, there's a 2.5 gigabit WAN port. This is becoming more standard now, but I'm yet to see residential services providing more in the UK. The max you generally see is one gigabit, unless you go business. They may exist, but I've not seen many of them. The software allows you to easily set up another SSID for your guest, and it also comes with the Netgear Armor, but we'll cover more of that in the app sections shortly. This router allows you to connect up to 100 plus simultaneous devices and covers up to 6,000 square feet of your home. And if that's not enough, you can add up to five satellites to make sure you have enough coverage to cover up to 14,000 square feet of space. Something to keep in mind that they don't always tell you with the mesh systems, when you connect wirelessly from the router to the satellite, you do lose half of your bandwidth. So keep in mind, the more you link, the more you daisy chain, the more bandwidth you lose. Now, if you do have another ethernet cable run to the other side of the house, you can plug in simply from the back of the router and to the satellite, and that will give you a full bandwidth connection. With the Orbi app, the Netgear router is easy and simple to set up. You simply download the app, run through a few steps and you're ready to go. They also have a web browser that you can actually get into more advanced settings if you wanna do some more configuration. If you want to see a video on optimizing your Orbi router, let me know down in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. You can also within the app see what devices are connected to the network. There is also a traffic meter feature of the app as well, which allows you to see who's using the most bandwidth. Let's go ahead and get this plugged into my network and run some speed tests. Let's see how well it works with the wireless and the ethernet backhaul to see if there's much of a difference. Finally, let's talk price. This will not be the cheapest investment you ever make, but to ensure you have no dead spots throughout the home and maximum bandwidth available, it can be priceless, especially when you have multiple devices and they're streaming, playing games, etc. The router plus one satellite is £699 in the UK and in the US it's $799. And you also have the additional, as I mentioned, to buy five satellites, so you can keep adding on to the packs. They do go on offer, so keep an eye out for them. Getting this set up is quite easy. We just need to pop in a 12 volt power supply to the back just here, and you'll see there's a little DC light that pops up and flashes green when it's powering up. There's also a, a light that goes around the side of this unit just here as well, so you will see that power up. We also need to plug in an ethernet cable into the two and a half gig socket, so you would go from your modem router to the back of this. And again, the simple way to do that is just to pop the ethernet cable just in here like that. So this unit now has an ethernet connection into the back of it and it has power. Next, we open up the Orbi Netgear app you check the terms and conditions and click agree. You ask the app not to track. You need to enable allow local access into the network to allow the Orbi to find the devices. And we click okay. Allow the notifications, click allow. Now it's up to you if you wanna enable this. This is using location services to join your Wi-Fi. So you can choose whether you want to allow or not. I'm just gonna click allow for now. And then only while using the app. And then you go ahead and you create your Netgear account. It will then ask you if you want to turn on Face ID, so you can choose whether you want to do that. 
that will then allow you to just go straight into your app settings and then we verify the email which has just come through. As I mentioned, setting up the Orbi is really simple. So you click Setup, it will choose your network. So we click Get Started. There's a QR code on the base of your Orbi. So just enable the camera and scan it. And that is literally just at the bottom just here. So we can go ahead and scan that. So at this point, I haven't actually got my satellites positioned up yet. Okay, we then go ahead and join the Orbi network. So we click continue and then we say join and it's gonna go off and join the Wi-Fi. So the router itself is just here. So we'll let that go off and connect to the wireless network. But in just a few simple steps, you're set up and ready to go. And for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna quickly go ahead and power up those satellites so it can get all connected. What it should do is it should go ahead, detect the satellites and it's found two of two. So let's click continue and then it will wanna personalize your settings. I'm gonna leave the Wi-Fi network as it is at the moment. So we click next. We'll give it an admin username and password and then we go ahead and let it go off and do the firmware update. So let's take a look at the Orbi app and see what it's all about. So we can see that we have one satellite online and the internet is online. We have device manager, which shows you the devices that are connected to your network. We have security. Now this is a chargeable fee, which at the moment they have a 60% sale off. So for me, it would probably cost me, let's scroll down to the bottom. It's gonna cost me a total of 34 pounds for the year. That gives me the device scanning for Bitdefender. It scans, checks for vulnerabilities and gives me recommendations depending on my network. So I have a 30 day trial at the moment. So that's what's working at this point. But you can see, I can click on it. It will tell me what device it is and I don't have Bitdefender installed and it will go off and tell you how to install it on that device. Make some recommendations on your network at the bottom. So enable notification, guest Wi-Fi, additional protections and strong passwords. We'll come back to internet speed. We have parental control. There's a charge to this. You go ahead and click unlock premium. You can set limits and create schedules. You can block inappropriate websites and block any apps that you don't want to be used on the network. Then we look at the network map. We can see that the device is how it's set up. There is another Orbi satellite, which isn't plugged in at the moment, but you can put that somewhere else as well. Wi-Fi settings, it gives you the password, the security method, and also this does support WPA3 as well. So you have that as an encryption method. So you have the latest and greatest. And finally, you have a couple more options down here, which is traffic meter and guest Wi-Fi. The guest Wi-Fi is really easy to activate. You go ahead and you enable the guest Wi-Fi, that's it. It'd be really good if we could add some additional Wi-Fi SSIDs in here, so you could have some multiple ones. And then finally, the traffic meter. So you can see today, yesterday, this week, this month, you can see how much traffic has been used in both the download and the upload through the network and what your general average is. And then the last thing I wanna test is the internet speed. So the internet speed itself, we wanna go ahead and click test my speed. I'm right next to the router, so I'm expecting a fairly decent result, but let's go ahead and give this a test. So 630. So I'm getting about 620 megabits per second download and 40 megabits per second upload. The ping is 13 milliseconds across and this is using speedtest.net. So as you can see, the app is really simple and easy to use. Very few settings within there. There is some advanced settings on the web browser, which we will have a look at. Logging into the web interface, you can see the basic shows you pretty much what you would see in the app. So internet, wireless, attached devices, guest and if you want to add another Orbi satellite, you can do that. Advanced is probably more what I'm interested in. So I want to have a quick look at what we have on here. So we have the internet setup. You can use WAN aggregation with a 2.5 gigabits and one gigabit port uh, using LACP. There's some wireless configuration in terms of the channels. It doesn't give you an option to select, it gives you the option to select the channel, but it doesn't give you the option to scan to see what's available. And you also have uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz if you want to turn one of those off. WAN setup, there's some options in here. The LAN setup, you can choose the IP address and the subnet mask. I'll move a little bit out of the way. You can see the DHCP addresses in the bottom right hand corner just here. So you have some options there. Speed tests, see this is the bit that I find a little bit interesting. We saw that the tests were a bit inconsistent on the app, but we saw when we went to the speed test app itself, it was perfectly fine. Device name, then we move on to security. So there's a little bit more granular control with the block sites. Uh, the scheduling and also emailing. So if you want to be emailed notifications about um, about the block sites being accessed, you can get emails about that. 
You have administration where you can back up and configure and restore attached devices, logs, etc, etc. And also the final bit I wanted to look at was the advanced. Inside here you have the option to choose router or AP mode of the device. You can port forward, there's a dynamic DNS built into this so you can use a service. So if you have Netgear DDNS or no IP DDNS you can add the account in here and it will automatically update your IP address. The other good thing is you have a VPN service on here. You can actually enable the VPN service and it's an open VPN client that you would go off and install. You can download some pre-packages and that will go off and configure them on the relevant devices for you. Static routes, uh, UPnP, the traffic meter and the last thing I wanted to see right here is the VLAN bridge setup. So you have the option to enable VLANs. So you can select it, enable it, set what VLAN you want. And what I go ahead and add, I can give it a name, uh, test VLAN. Give it a VLAN ID, 150, what priority you want, and then you can assign it to specific ports uh, if you wanted to. So, so I do see down here we have wireless where it's selected all and the wide ports is also selected to all. The only thing I haven't seen is where you would assign this to a wireless SSID. So it would be good to be able to create additional SSIDs to be able to have your IoT devices on there. That's getting more and more popular where you want to segregate all the IoT devices and keep them away from your general network from some of the stories you might be reading about that sort of stuff so maybe something for Netgear to add into a future release. So I'm now at the furthest point in my house and I'm going to run a quick speed test on this app to see how it works so let's just click run my speed again. I was getting approximately over 400 I think it was somewhere around that uh, the, next to the router so it's showing me 433 here which you can actually see the signal in my top right hand corner I find that a li little bit hard to believe. This is run by speedtest.net so what I'm actually going to do is once this is finished, I'm going to run another test on speed test to see what kind of speed I'm actually getting because I find that I'm down to two bars and there's only 292 and I'm getting 292 megabits per second download speed. I find that a little bit hard to believe at this point, but I'm just going to quickly go ahead and run a speed test on speedtest.net. Okay, so this is using the same provider. So we go ahead and click go. Let's have a quick look at what sort of speed we're getting here. So there we go, this is the kind of speed I actually expect it to be getting right about now. So 20, 25 megabits per second download speed, the ping is a lot higher at 24 milliseconds, and we can see the upload speed is gonna be fairly low. So what I'm gonna do now is, I have the satellite here right next to me, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. Let's see if we can get this to improve. So now that's booted up, you can see, I don't know if you can actually see, there's a little blue light coming out the bottom just here. Um, but that's now connected and if we go into the app you'll see it on the screen as well we have one satellite connected which is the one here next to me so if I go to the network map also you can see that the internet is connected to the router which has then the Orbi satellite so what I'm actually going to do is run a quick speed test on here but I am going to go back to the speed test app as well and see how that works so now this is giving me again 400 but I'm not <laughs> entirely sure I can believe the speeds I'm getting on this so I am actually going to go back upstairs and test it next to the router as well just to see what sort of speeds I'm getting there. Okay, we're connected. You can see the signal's a lot more stronger now. And then we click go. Let's see what we will get. And you can see straight away my speed is a lot better just connecting the satellite up. Keep in mind that I, I am not connected via an ethernet cable. It is literally just powered into the wall and it's picking up the signal from the other one and it's sending it across to give a better service. So I'm quite happy. This is actually running through at least two brick walls, I would say, um, and possibly a stud wall as well. And the router itself is on the first floor. So it's quite a far away. It's going through a couple of walls. So overall, I think plugging one of these in wirelessly works wonders. I'm actually going to quickly go ahead and plug it in wired as well, just to see what sort of performance we get. I've just gone ahead and plugged in an ethernet cable which goes to the Orbi router upstairs. So it plugs into one side, this side, and the other side is plugged in upstairs. Now, granted this is running through my house, through a network cable all the way upstairs, so it's a decent length, but I wanna show you exactly what it does to the speed. So we're around about 300 megabits per second on the other one. So if I click go now, and we've actually run a cable between one router to the other you can see my speed now jumps up to 500, 550, pushing even 560. And the ping is around about 20 milliseconds. So you can see it's decent. The upload's still dropping off a little bit, but in terms of the download speed, it's a lot better than what it was. So what I'm gonna quickly go and do is go back upstairs and just run a test next to the router itself just to see 
to make sure we are getting a similar sort of 500 megabits per second because I'm not sure I can really trust the app in terms of the speed it was giving me. Just for completeness, I'm gonna go ahead and right next to the router now, and I'm gonna go ahead and run the speed test while I'm talking to you. So you can see straight away, I was getting exactly the similar sort of speeds downstairs, 500 plus megabits per second, right next to the router. And when I plugged in downstairs, uh, cable directly from here to the one downstairs, I was getting also 500 plus megabits per second. So you can see what the ethernet backhaul does. Whereas the speed wasn't as good when it was connected to this wirelessly, as I mentioned about the bandwidth issues, we now have full capability within the devices. Now is this worth buying in 2022? For anyone that wants to invest in their home network, the answer is yes. The Netgear Orbi is a perfect system to get started. It gives you room to expand your network. They do have a Wi-Fi 6E model now, which is a bit more expensive. That gives you the latest and greatest Wi-Fi speeds. But with this throughput, I think you're gonna be perfectly fine. However, Netgear, if you are listening, I would love to do a comparison on the 6E one. So if you do wanna send that to me, I'm happy to do a review. If you want to purchase these, the links are down in the description below. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate account, so do keep in mind I do make a small commission, but it helps me bring you more videos like this. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know your comments down below. Do you like this Orbi router? Have you got one? How do you find it? And is there any settings that you can point out to me that is really good on this unit? For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.